Dimitri Broxen. I'm the Senior Director of Education at Museum of the African Diaspora in San Francisco. This is In the Artist Studio. Um, today we are joined by Ramakan Orwisters. Uh, last week we um, started the series with Andrew Wilson and next week we will have Shaniqua Brooks. So I'm going to start off by reading Rama Khan's bio, which is in no way comprehensive at all. Hopefully we'll peel back the layers and get deeper into who Rama Khan is and also what his practice is. And I'm just really excited to be able to do this series uh, with some of my favorite people in the entire world. Thank you. So <laughs> growing up in the Jim Crow South during the civil rights movement, Rama Khan or Wisters had a safe haven quilting with his grandmother where he was embraced, important, and special. These early memories prompted his nascent series of unique crocheted ceramic sculptures titled Mending. Employing ordinary household or decorative pottery, broken and discarded, Orwisters combined traditional crafts into a dimension woven tapestry, stripping both cloth and ceramic of their intended function. In his new series of sculptures titled Cheesecake, the works have transformed from something broken, needing mending to fully determined and self-aware. Being black and queer, the full complexity of the moniker cheesecake used to objectify an attractive, sexualized man or woman is not lost to Orwisters. Instead, he embraces it, subverting the demeaning implication and describing his said objects, combining lacy embellished fabrics with some ceramics contributed by students and faculty from California State University at Long Beach. Or Worcester sculptural hybrids embody both danger and seduction in his bold coming of age works. Ramakan Or Worcesters is the founder of Crochet Jam, a community arts project infused with folk art traditions that foster a creative culture and cooperative relationships. Born in Kernsville, North Carolina, or Worcesters earned a master's in divinity from Duke University Divinity School in 1986. He was an artist in residence at the De Young Museum, the Jurassic Resident Artist Program, and the Vermont Studio Center. Grants and awards include, include Artadia, the Fund for Art and Dialogue, New York, the San Francisco Foundation, and the San Francisco Arts Commission Cultural Equity Program. He received the 2014 Eureka Fellow, awarded by the Fleischacker Foundation in San Francisco. His work has been featured in the LA Times, San Francisco Chronicle, 7x7 Magazine, Artnet, and the San Francisco Examiner. I also want to mention that uh, this program, today's program, is co-presented with the Headland Center. And uh, we will talk a little bit more around uh, Rama Khan's residency um, as we get deeper into this conversation today. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, and so I just want to start off with Ramakan. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you. So far, yeah. so, good. so far, so good. <laughs> Everything's good for you. You're in a positive, happy space right now. Well, now I am. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Um, generally, how are you, you know, the, just get the elephant out of the room right here. How are you doing, um, being in quarantine? Well, I think I'm lucky in that, you know, being an artist, I spend a lot of time alone in my studio. A lot of time, you know, because uh, the work can't get done and, you know, unless it's a cl uh, collaboration. So I'm used to it to some degree, but not to the extent that we're dealing with it, with it now. So I think it would have been even more of a difficult for me if, it, if I did not have some idea. Plus I meditate. So I, I'm used to spending, you know, two hours a day, three hours a day in meditation. So I'm used to having my thoughts and my time alone that isn't so disruptive um, and since meditation is very good it helps improve creativity um, and, and many many other things it it's uh it has um a very good up upside to it okay but i do i do have a difficult time with the idea of being like you know when i'm in my studio i certainly can leave but now no <laughs> <laughs> that isn't possible and and in your in your studio, are you are you going out and into a studio, or where is your studio located? My studio is my second bedroom in my condo. <laughs> so I, I figured if I wait to have enough money to afford her, that may that may come one day, but it's not happening now. So I don't I don't I don't wrestle with it. I go, yeah, this is what I have. I'll accept it. I'll I'll 
I'll, I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be grateful for it. I mean, no one wants to hear about someone who, who owns a condo in San Francisco about how difficult times are, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm thinking, you know what? I'm going to keep my mouth shut and turn my studio, second bedroom into my studio. Are, are you are you finding yourself working? I mean, you know, have, having the studio at home, um, obviously it gives you more access to being able to work whenever you want to. But now that you're um, not able to go out, you know, into the world and do your normal things, do you find yourself in the studio more often or, or has that changed at all for you? Well, I'm, I'm in there more often because I figure, you know, after, after I retired from my, you know, from the museum, I thought, well, I need to change my work day from the office to my studio day, you know, six hours in the studio. It, if that means I'm actually, you know, um, sculpting or I'm, I'm, I'm just sitting there with ideas, but, I, but the minute you're in the studio, things happen. You're gonna, you're gonna touch something and see something that needs to be repaired, something in my case that needs to be broken, um, you know, <laughs> <laughs> or, or torn up or cut into strips of fabric or crocheting. So I can, you know, I can crochet in the studio, I can crochet in the kitchen, on the sofa, you know, there's, you know, there's, I can crochet anywhere in, in the condo. So I figured, I'm, you know, I, I uh, am doing more work now because, you know, I'm pretty much, you know, it's all around me and there's no distractions over there. You know, okay. other, than, other than, you know, now we're in this, pla I, I call it the planet of now, the planet of now, because, <laughs> because now, you know, you know, in the moment, you will want to be able to have a distraction, go talk to your friends, have a cup of tea at a cafe, have dinner, but you can't do that. So you have to be in the moment of now. Now I'm feeling this anxiety at that, what I cannot do. So what are you going to do with those feelings <laughs> on the planet of now? And for me, it's my studio, which has always been, I've always been able to trust my creativity. It's never asked me to lie or cheat or steal or you know, you know, it's only asked me to be courageous. And so I, I, mm -hmm. I, I can, you know, there's very few things I trust, but I can absolutely trust my creativity. And if I say that, then how do I make that abstract idea concrete? Then I work. So, so, so are you keeping yourself bound to that six hours a day? You, you talked about- uh, Sometimes it's more, able... <laughs> sometimes it's less. But there's not much, else, not much else I need to, I need to do. Like sometimes I may be working on grants or writing proposals for grants or, you know, or, you know, um, photographs, you know, for, you know, for publicity on the gallery website or my website or the, the it's all, it's all art related. It's who I am. Mm -hmm. You know, it's what I do. I, I don't know what else, you know, I've been doing, I've been working, painting and drawing since I was, you know, in junior high. I have photographs, you know, I have not photographs, I have objects of that I have, have from that period that I look back and I think, do I really want to keep these? <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, but it shows that, you know, since junior high and through, and through high school, college in Israel, in, J in Japan, in San Francisco, I mean, I have all this work that I've been doing. How I feel about it is a different question but is the work is there <laughs> is there <laughs> yeah. well I, I'm, I'm glad that you started talking about uh work in junior high can you kind of take us back into the journey of who you are as an artist when did you first discover that you wanted to become an artist this was well you know um, uh you know i think if i really thought about it and knew what was involved i probably would have stayed at and on my original path of being a geologist and getting my, my, my master's and PhD in geology, <laughs> I don't, you know, or uh, I, I don't think I would have, you know, stayed on in divinity school. I've got my, you know, but if I knew how difficult it was, but I had no choice, it's who I am. So uh, when I first started as an artist, I was coming of age with my sexuality and I knew that my parents weren't, didn't quite know how to raise a black child in, in the Jim Crow South, mm -hmm. a queer black child. I mean, it's, raised, it's difficult enough to raise a black child. Sure, sure. Right? <laughs> I mean, and throw in there the gay and queer um, elements. So I knew, I knew that my parents 
because they were, I knew that I could tell by their body language and things they didn't say, like all children can when they're with, with their parents, and other authority figures, that they were concerned that I was not, you know, I was not interested in, you know, worrying about, you know, Jane or Sally or little girls and I'm at my age in the neighborhood. I wasn't, I wasn't really hanging out with, you know, and I wasn't playing football, you know, I, those interests, I was drawing and doing my homework on the kitchen table. So that means that I wasn't, I wasn't taunting the police. I wasn't selling drugs, go. right? I wasn't getting a little. I wasn't getting little girls pregnant, or I wasn't. I, you know, I wasn't being. He's doing his homework. He's penning and drawing. It's fine. So they never questioned my the issues of my sexuality were never a question because I I knew how to navigate and make them feel comfortable about. Well, would you rather have this? Or would you rather have that? <laughs> So, so, so for you, did this, did, did they, did they coincide your, your, um, your, your practice as an artist, did that coincide with your coming out um, or your, or your self-realization? That, 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 didn't, that didn't happen until I, after I left, you know, while I was in Japan and that was in my twenties. So, so when I first started, art was a way for me to, to hide. You know, it was a way to, for me to be able to, navigate my feelings or worldview through art you know because i wasn't i wasn't and to be honest i wasn't painting what i was thinking and feeling i was doing line drawings and you know pretty stuff that didn't really you know unpack what i was you know like the homophobia in the in the black church in the black america the uh the uh um uh um the need to maintain the heterosexual normalcy because you know the whole idea of being black and you know like my parents may have thought that maybe you know white people have the luxury to be gay and that kind of stuff whereas black people can't afford there's all kinds of stuff happening that's some of it's absurd but most of life you know i mean yeah to be, yeah to be alive to be surrounded by absurdity given even our certain even a you know, current situation can <laughs> can add some uh, credence to that. So that's how I started. You know, I started as a way to be able to um, calm the feelings and uh, emotions of those around me who are in authority. Whereas now okay. I don't have to worry about that because, you, know, you know, it's not an issue. Now, now I, I, can, I, can, I, can, I can manifest my authenticity. So what brought you to Japan? You know, you, you, you've you alluded a couple of times to Japan being well, this. Uh... You know, I mean, I, I figured, you know, I could not be who I need to become and stay in, and stay uh, uh, black and gay in North Carolina in the in the 70s. I, you know, I, I didn't want to be a minister. I didn't want to do any of that stuff. I figured the best thing to do is like, how far can I go? I had friends who were, who were expats. Ex, you know, living or going to go live in Japan, and they, just, they invited me to go with them. So I thought, well, how far can I go? You know, <laughs> <laughs> not not much further than that. <laughs> <laughs> not much further. No, there's, you know, completely not a word of Japanese at the time. A round trip ticket. You know, and I, I told my mother and my my, my mother that I was going to go to Japan, and she was like, she thought, wait, you spent all this time getting a master's. <laughs> And you're gonna, you're gonna do what in Japan? What? You're gonna be an artist in Japan? <laughs> and, uh, and so my mother, we're, we're we're in the driveway of my, you know, and my mother was pretty distraught about the whole idea because I think she liked the idea of being, a, you know, her son being, you know, the minister, head of the church, and all that. I thought it was it was, was was that the intent of you getting your master's in divinity was to become a minister? Wow. Um, and that didn't happen. Um, <laughs> so. My mother was out in the parking lot and my, my father, you know, who was, you know, it's a Sunday, you know, he was, you know, watching football in his underwear because this is the only day to be, you know, do what he wants to do. <laughs> He's in his, you know, and uh, he was really pissed off that he had to, you know, put his pants on and come outside and see what, what my mother and I were like, you know, making all that noise about. And she, you know, and my father said to me, he said, do you have a ticket? I said, yeah. So he said, well, okay, good. Get in the car. I'll drive to the airport. Wow. Mother was like, 
she's like, oh no, oh, all hell broke loose after that. She was like, <laughs> I thought she was crying before, but no, it became a big, it became, you know, all, you know, and, you know, and she and I were like, you know, you know, um, it was, you know, and then he said, you know, he said, well, I'm, I'm going to ask you one more time. Get in the car and I will drive you to the airport. Because I figured, <laughs> He was saying, you know, because he went to the Navy. How else? And he, he, when, when he was living, he, he said he didn't say anything about the Navy. Other, he didn't say one word about the Navy. This is, this, this is, the, this is the Jim Crow Navy in the 40s. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, their Navy in the 40s, was, you know, most, most of the black men there were either cooking, you know, serving the officers or polishing their shoes, white officers. Only thing he said about that was in World War II was it was better than being at home. That's all right. Okay. Really? So, so in a lot of ways, in a lot of ways, you were following in his footsteps. Following his footsteps. Es- he goes escaping the Jim Crow South to Jim kind of South. discover oh, yourself. He didn't, he didn't ask me. I said, I, had, I only had a one-way ticket to Japan. Wow. He wasn't, he's like, hey, if you get back, you get back. You'll figure it out. So I said, you know, <laughs> and I knew that if I, you know, because my father had, you know, I knew he, he had made a decision to come back and live in a small town, middle of nowhere. He knew what would, what would happen if I stayed. Uh, and he's asking me, because if, if I broke down with my mother's tears and I was in my mid twenties, I could be broken down by mother's tears to the, for the rest of my life. <laughs> and he knew that. Mm-hmm. He said, get in the car. I'm only gonna ask you one more time. Otherwise I'm gonna go back into the house, take my pants off and watch football. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I, I, I love I love that fatherly love of like, let's, let's <laughs> like it, no. you want to do this? Let's just make it, it happen. <laughs> make it happen. But I'm not putting up with this. I've seen this too many times. I'm not doing it. So, you know. Yeah, I, can you I got can, can you tell Yeah, can can you tell us the rest of how your family you you know, I I read your bio at the beginning and you, you kind of talked about quilting with your grandmother. How how does family inform your work or the experience of your family and your ancestors? Well, you know, my family, you know, no one in my family expressed their worldview using oil paint on canvas. <laughs> sure. <laughs> no, no, no one said no one was using that as the to go a fine art point of view. They were using fabric. My grandmother, my mother were all expressing their joys and pains and their hopes through their quilts, their work that they made, you know, they made their own clothes, my mother and grandmother, grandmother did. And they made all these things out of fabric. Um, you know, and my father worked for 35 years in a cotton mill. There's Haynes Knit, Haynes Cotton in Winston-Salem. Oh, wow. Right? 35 years. My mother worked there too as a piecemeal worker sewing sleeves on the t-shirts. And I would go visit and it'd just be a room full of women, most of them working on these sewing, and they would be in rhythm with the sewing machine because they have to make sure that they make enough of them piecemeal to get, you know, to get their bonuses. Mm-hmm. And they have to, anyway, so, you know, no one walked around wearing canvas, painted canvas as part of their garment. <laughs> Everyone was wearing clothes and fabric. So I thought, you know, I need to let go of being angry about the art world as it comes to like, why aren't, why isn't art world looking at my work? Why aren't, why aren't it paint? But I wasn't being authentic in my worldview. I wasn't, no, I couldn't, painting uh, wasn't authentic to my cultural experience. Working in fabric is. Hmm. Okay, okay. Right. So when I, when, I, when I let go of trying to put, you know, my square, black queer experience into a round, you know, Western European point of view or any way you want to flip it, everything changed. I, my anger, my anger changed because you know what, I'm not going to, I'm not going to try to get into that. I'm going to make what I want to see out of fabric. Right. You know, and then do for fabric what fabric has done for me. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's it allowed me with my grandmother. She it allowed me to be able to be embraced and calm. So when I work with fabric, it takes me all the way back to childhood memories of being, you know, who I, who I need to become with fabric. So, but, but before that, I wasn't paying any attention. I mean, all these stories were there, but I wanted to do that, uh, that Western European oil mm-hmm. on canvas. And, you know, cause that was what I was told. If you, that's an artist, 
you know, but the whole thing about, you know, being a black male working with fabric, it's like, you know, all righty then, you know, <laughs> like that is <laughs> a male macho kind of like, you know, that too was, I'm not that. I'm not the epitome of black and masculine identity. Who needs to be? Who wants right. to be? <laughs> not mine. <laughs> you know, my job is to be who I am as authentically as I can through my, as an artist, through whatever material is authentic to my experience. So, so when did you, you know, as, as an artist, I mean, I, I came into my awareness of your work. I would say when you had your solo show at the luggage store at, in the early 2000s. It's, it's been a little while ago. <laughs> I'm like, I don't even remember what it was anymore. At that time, um, there was definitely fabric incorporated into your work. Um, but you know, the, the piece that I instantly fell in love with was Faded Above the Salt, um, yes. the throne that yep. you created that, that rested on these uh, champagne glasses, yes. I believe, or champagne flutes that had salt in them um, that were meticulously pieced together. You did have elements of, of clothes pins and, and yes. um, I don't know, hat, hat pins, I guess, or, yeah. or the straight yeah. pins. And other pieces. Um, yeah, and, 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 you know, very complex. And, and I remember seeing it and just being like, I don't know what it is, but this is gorgeous. It's important. It, it, it gave me an emotional feeling that I instantly connected with. And, and you know, I, I had to then find out, you know, what it was about this piece that moved me in, in such a way. Um, but then, you know, so, so, so that's, that's where I first became aware of you and I was just like, whoever this person is, you know, we've got to have him at the museum. I've got to have mm -hmm. him in, in, in a show. This, this guy is amazing. Um, and then, you know, you've kind of, I, 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 I noticed at least, at least from my awareness, then there was a shift to you working with the softer fabrics, the crochets, the crocheting and, and the works um, that I think you've been doing pretty much ever since that, that time. Um, what, what created that shift for you? Well, I, you know, the, the idea of what, what, what materials really reference who I am, you know, the, the whole idea of like fighting with, um, like I've always been told that, you know, that marginalized materials isn't fine art, you know, and we've been told all kinds of things all of our lives. Doesn't mean it's true. <laughs> right? So if I want to use fabric, you know, and it's, you know, and everything around me says, well, that isn't fine art, then I can say, what do I say? What do I want? Who am I? And how do I want to, want to define myself on my own terms with any material? And, you know, and can I, can I say, well, can I be, the, can I be subversive? You know, can I, can I be like, no, I don't care. You know, if the, if the contemporary art scene is saying this, well, what does, that, what does it have to do with me? Because they're not paying me any attention anyway. So why can't I define myself through an authentic experience on my own terms and let that carry the day? So, you know, if I ride off in the sunset and, you know, and I've, you know, and I've not been in, you know, the major museums or whatever, that's okay. I've been able to, I've been able to be comfortable, calm and uh, authentic in what I, call my worldview through the materials that I use. Mm -hmm. And even, and to be subversive is great. Like, yeah, so there, so there's strips of fabric. So how's that different than, you know, than, you know, canvas is still fabric. It's still oil paint on fabric or acrylic on fabric. So I didn't, you know, and I, and I thought, you know what, I'm, I'm in an age where now it's like, you know, I'm letting go of all what should have been because I can't spend my life navigating in what should have been because it ain't if it ain't sure. happening by now it ain't going to happen <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah i love that and you know and i and i, and I love that you say that the you know your your choice of material because it is very common types of material and i and actually um one of the things that i appreciate is is your yeah none of your materials are ultra precious um, by themselves, it's it's when you assemble them together and you make these beautiful objects of desire. Um, you know that 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 I think they become um, just you know this invaluable piece of artwork. Um, and I and I think in a lot of ways you were ahead of the curve. You know I think the art world in the last couple of years has started to embrace craft 
um, within the fine art context, but you've been doing this for decades. Um, can, can you talk a little bit more about that? And then, you know, um, j just for everyone to know the format of it, um, I want to probably go with questions and my discussion with you for the, maybe about until 1.30ish, and then we want to open, and then we want to do a studio visit, and then we're going to open up for Q&A from the audience. Um, so, so as people, as ideas and questions start to come to you, you can start typing them in the Q&A and we'll address them. Um, but yeah, I want to I want to hear more about your your material choice and you know in a lot of ways again for me you've been very much ahead of the curve um, in terms of that now it's very trendy um, at least with the with the art market to you know see people working in crochet and knitting and in traditional craft and you know has now become embraced uh, as as fine art material but you've been doing it all along um, have you seen changes? in the art market in terms of your own work and your own popularity or, or the art market accepting you? Well, I mean, the, the whole idea of, you know, that's a, that's a very um, acceptance, you know, sometimes you are, <laughs> sometimes you're not, right? So if you crave acceptance, you're going down a very slippery slope because, you know, uh, we all, you know, we all too soon may fall from grace. Um, so I, I'm, I, I, figure, I figure that, you know, as when I was a curator at the museum, I would, I would like the idea of artists being visible. You know, you, you do your work, I'll hear about you, I find you. Sure. You know, don't, you know, because that's my job is to find the artist. <laughs> if you're knocking on my door and saying, well, here I am. Well, then you know, why, not just in, why not invite me to your, to your shows? Like, you know, send an invitation and here I, and I'll show up. So that I'm not always feeling as though, you know, you want to be discovered. As, a, as an artist, you want to be discovered. So I figured the best thing I need to do with my art is get it out there. You know, and then people who, are, who, will, who will chime with what I'm doing will come to me. Instead of me always having to send out all that energy. You know, here I am, here I am, here I am. They go, so what? <laughs> There's, I mean, how many billions of artists are there out there? So why should I look at your work and no one else? And so what makes it, and I think, well, when they're, when, so the only reason why they look at it is that it's something in them that brings, that resonates, and they are interested in it. And if, they aren't, and if they're not, then they're not. So I, I've, you know, and it's fabric, and it's not, it's always fabric and, and right now, and ceramics, because it's from, you know, to me, that is the best way to use those materials, you know, are the best way for me to to express what it feels like to be in a, in a country where with the permanence of racism you know mm -hmm. it's you know it's just absurd <laughs> it's absurd and the list goes on of what it is really there's many other things that can be to describe it but i you know but my experience is mine you know i you know yours is yours how can i what how can i help people to connect with their own emotions, their own pain, their own, not mine, because mine's mine. How do I want to use it? My joy, whatever, how, how I want to express it is up to me. I'm not asking people to like to, because I can't, you can't experience what it means to be black in America unless you are. Mm -hmm. but how do I, how do I help people understand their own emotions? So, you know, on a, on a level that's unconscious, you know, like dream language, you know, these bizarre broken pieces of ceramics, sharp and, pointing coming out and it's then this wrap with all this beautiful color and tight and just held in there it's like you can't move like and it's that's it's dangerous it's a threat it's you know it's, it's cared for <laughs> but i don't throw ceramics i don't throw shards away i mean but we throw people who are like shards away all the time mm -hmm. Our, you know governments do that all the, not just ours all of them do it ours may have a different degree of which they do it but they all do it Right. So symbolically, I'm saying, you know, that's how I feel. That's what it feels like for me to be, you know, in, in the U.S. And, you know, and have to have to chew, swallow and digest what it means. What 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 the permanence of racism means or mm -hmm. any of the isms for that matter. They're not going away. They were here when I got here and I bet you they'll be here when I'm gone. <laughs> so 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 for you, the ceramic and. It, it, it is a representation of humans um, yes. and, yeah. and the marginalized humans. Yes, because, you know, because we know, because it's like the, like the material, like fabric is marginalized. Mm -hmm. Ceramics are marginalized. People are marginalized. 
right? So, so that's, that's the, that's the, uh, the, con the abstract, of, you know, I'm using abstract materials to reference a, um, a concrete experience. Mm -hmm. Like a dream, like, you know, we all, you know, in dream language, you know, all these, all our dreams have, they're not literal, they're symbolic. Mm -hmm. And to get people to think symbolically, you don't want to go to their conscious mind. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not interacting with anyone's conscious, unconsciously anymore. My artwork is going to tap into the unconscious. I want them to be like, you know, so worked up that when they go to the Safeway and the rain falls on those, on the, on the vegetables and they got a, they got a head of lettuce. And it's it's weeping, and they are crying too. <laughs> and I don't know why they're crying because we're holding in so much. We have to, yeah, we have especially, to especially during these times, right? When you're on a planet of now, and you you know mm -hmm. and you, can't, you can't do your your own thing anymore. You have to be in quarantine if you if you're wise. You have to deal with well. What were those distractions distracting me from? What pain? What anxiety? What unhappy memories? What? And will I self-medicate? Will I go? Will I drink? Will I overeat? Will I? Will I? You know? Or will I? Or will I? Will I uh, do some helpful stuff like you know, healthy stuff like exercise, eat more veg. I'm not you know that kind of thing. But we really are becoming aware of how distractions were covering up a lot of emotional turmoil. So 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 would you say? I mean, it kind of sounds to me like you know. You, you went to study divinity and get your master's in it, but, but in a way that that work finds its way, that, that spiritual healing work does find its way into your actual work. Well, that's, yes, it does. Do you see it, it that way? That's how I interpret it, right? Other people may look at it and have a whole indifferent, and that's, that's great because, you know, um, no one, they don't have to see it. Once, I'm, once I make it, I'm, I've, I've expressed it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. People can re people can respond to it any way they like, I and mean, I get all kinds of stuff. But I've done because if I was a writer, I would write about it, right? If I was a poet, I know. But I make objects, I make you know sculpture, and that's my way of being able to express the unexpressible. And 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 now you're working with uh, CSU Long Beach to obtain your 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 ceramics. Um, what what was that choice around? Well, you know, uh, the idea was that uh, uh, Pat uh, Sweeto, she has a, the artist who worked there. There are, there are some of the teachers there, some of the students there, and, and the whole idea of being able to collaborate with um, students and faculty with the whole idea of using ceramics in another context for a different purpose. Mm -hmm. Outside of just making them, you know, as a collaboration. So, you know, so I, I create artwork I, and I, you know, I have it, you know, I, I pay for it to be shipped up here, all that. And then I, I also donate to the organization. Uh, great. So that kind of thing. So that I, so it's a mutually beneficial relationship. But the whole idea of, of using a uh, moving, uh, you know, moving, moving, uh, moving toward um, studio ceramics that are one of a kind. Okay. They don't exist anywhere else. And they're broken. And they're gorgeous. So do they arrive to you already already broken or yeah. are you destroying them? No, no, they come broken. Wow, okay. And then, and then, <laughs> and then you know, the, the, uh, the UPS uh, uh, person, he or she may, may drop it, you know, <laughs> and, then, you know, and that's okay, I can do, I can handle that. Otherwise, people will be very upset if things you know, come to you and they're broken, but I'm like, I'm sure. so, I'm like, look at that, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't if I thought about it, right? I wouldn't if I thought about it, it wouldn't break that way. Sure, it, sure. It would break the way it wants to break, you know? But I have to accept it in the same way I want to be who I want to become. You know, and I, I know that I say these, I, I, don't, I don't see a, a distinction between the material world and how we think. <laughs> Most people think you, that's, that's because you're crazy, but we'll, we'll, we'll go with you. I don't, mm. I, don't, I don't see that, I don't, you know, I don't see a difference between <laughs> the waking world and the dream world. It's a thin veil. You can walk through back and forth through both, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So when I talk about a broken and uh, in, in dream language, you know, we want to be who we are, even if we're broken. You know, even if we don't become who, or what other people want us to be, you know, accept us as we are. But that isn't what we. That isn't the world we live in. If conformity is rampant, and there's penalties if you don't conform. 
Some of them are severe. Some of them are deadly. Uh, <laughs> for, yeah, definitely. Um, be, before we go into, yeah, before we go into looking at your studio, I want you to talk a little bit about Crochet Jam. And I know you, you make a, dis, you, you distinguish between your art practice, Ramakan or Whistler's The Artist, and Crochet Jam. So can you talk a little bit about Crochet Jam, how that came about, and, and what it is? Well, Crochet Jam is extremely autobiographical. You know, it's a whole process where, you know, like my grandmother allowed me to she made her quilt and she knew that I was, I was having a tough time navigating the racism and homophobia of the Jim Crow South in the 60s, late 60s and early 70s when I was becoming, you know, uh, 10, 12, 13 years old. But we never talked about things. You know, you know, it's the South. Everything is very not, you know, it's all there, <laughs> but it's all spurted <laughs> around. But everyone can feel it, but what, no one talks about it. But she would mm -hmm. say, you know, she said to me one day, you know, come here, boy, help me with this quilt. And I thought, oh, grandma, that's a, the last thing I want to do is at 12, <laughs> those things going with my grandmother, right? <laughs> right? It's the last thing, you know. And then um, in those days with authority, you, you can think whatever you want, but you better be walking toward her while you're doing it. Sure. So, sure. <laughs> life in danger if you walk, if you, think, <laughs> you stay out loud what you're thinking. And even walk the other direction, you're, you're putting your life in danger. <laughs> I'm not kidding. That, that, so, that, 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 that old school discipline, I love oh, it. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. You just you know. And then she said, you, you know, any color, any pattern you want, I'll show you how to add it to my quilt. Wow. She spent months on this quilt. I mean, it already had a pattern, and I could break mm -hmm. the pattern, right? So I, in the legacy of my grandmother, that was a healing, embracing a moment for me. How can I how can I provide that for others, for strangers, in a safe environment, in public, around the world, using mm -hmm. fabric and a wooden hook? Right? A, a specialized wooden hook. <laughs> yes, yes. It's one of the <laughs> wooden hooks, yes. You know, so that, that that was, you know, and let that be a part of my art. You know, I don't have I don't have nothing to sell, not to the public in any way, nothing to sell. And then you're not being told what to do. Like as a, you know, I feel, uh, you know, black men are, there's so much being told who we need to be and what we're not, we're not, they were always being told what to do. And I thought, you know what, wouldn't it be a healing experience to be in the presence of other people and you don't feel as though someone's telling you what to do as mm -hmm. a person authority? And that, just for a few seconds, wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be meditative, kind of, kind of calming, very soothing? and then not be judged by what you create. I mean, so you don't know what you're making, you're just making it, let it just make it. It doesn't really matter, they're all your colors. This, so that, that's what I want. I want not to be told what to do and not to mm -hmm. be judged. So I figured, you know what, I am gonna give that to others through the folk art tradition of rag rug making that I call crochet jam. I love it. I love it. And some of those uh, community projects have turned into larger installations, right? You know, some of them, you know, for, for example, the, I mean, there, there are the community ones and those, whatever people make in the community ones, it's theirs because mm -hmm. the organization, the individual wants the event. So if the organization wants to keep the materials, then that's fine because they, they provide, they provided the funding for the material and for me to be able to lead the event. And it stays with the organization. Mm -hmm. So whatever they make, it stays with them or the individual artists. Or, or the, you know, the well, it's a it's a performance. They they're 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 performing as a community group, group right? They're all yeah yeah. I, you know, I don't I don't go in going I'm the I'm the artist. I know I'm the facilitator, and we're all working as a community as artists. You know, like one big beehive of artists. You know, I guess I'd be the queen. I guess in some way. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Yeah, and you know, you know, I've I've been able to participate in a couple of them, and I've got I've just got to say, I was just like, wait, really? You just want me to just make whatever and go in whatever direction I went to? Um, and you know, and 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 I noticed I wasn't the only one. I was like, am I doing this right? <laughs> um, yeah. You know, I, I, I think why, plays in. Why to be told what to do, and we and we want to be judged. I mean, if I was on a if I was on a on a soapbox down at uh, on, on financial street or whatever. And I was telling people, you want to be told what to do. 
right? You want to be judged. <laughs> you know what freedom is because you're so used to conforming. They would, you know, they would drag me off that box, off that soapbox, <laughs> and come at me to death. They're like, you know, right? But if I show them, and they they had their own internal, like, oh, why am I asking him? He's he's a no, he's just a guy behind a table. He's a he's an authority over a table of rags. I'm, I'm <laughs> thirty, I'm forty, I'm fifty, I'm whatever it is. What does he care how it looks? Why do I need approval? I mean, these things are all so ingrained in us that we don't even think about them anymore. Yeah, the young people, they have no problem, right? They go, an adult not talking, hallelujah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, I, I would love to be able to shift towards uh, seeing what you're working on right now. Well, I'll give you a little, you know, I think there's some work behind me. I'm not sure if you can see any of that. Can you? Yes, for sure. And I'm going to um, just make myself disappear so that um, we can see you in larger screen. So, 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 so what are we seeing? What, what, what's, what's happening? I can see this well, piece I'm, with I'm the, the ceramics. The same, you know, I'm still working in the same, you know, vein of creating, you know, uh, you know, uh, cheesecake using, you know, um, this, <laughs> this, this is going to be tough because it's, uh, this, all that lighting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. And, and you've, so how you've do I got do the, the, the watermelons also. And the watermelons, right? So I, you know, I thought, well, what would it, you know, instead of, instead of trying to worry about what things, how things look, don't worry about it. Just bring things that you don't think are a part of, you know, that are incongruent and let them just be there and then see what happens. It may, and it will lead you somewhere else and it will lead you somewhere else and it will lead you somewhere else, you know? That, you know, because if I keep thinking things have to be right, then, then I won't do it. If I keep thinking, well, it, it's not about being right. It's just about being, exploring who you are, exploring your creativity on whatever level makes sense. I, th I think there's, there's also a part with your work, um, you know, uh, the pieces that you had at the most recent Untitled Art Fair, where they defy gravity. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And, uh, you know, you're just like, how is that thing standing on its own? And, you know, I remember you describing that these things are very heavy. And, you know, visually now, now when I'm seeing the piece that's behind you, it doesn't, it, you don't get the sense that it has as much weight as no, it, I mean, I'm imagining no, that, it does. That, one, that, one, that, one is, that one's pretty heavy, pretty big as well. It's pretty heavy. I'm not sure the lighting may not work very well, but. But anyway, yes, I, you know, my, that, my idea is, you know, just trust the materials, just trust them. You know, don't worry about it. You know, you're not quite sure how you're going to, how am I going to do this? How am I gonna, and you, if you trust the materials enough, they will reveal their secrets. They will reveal their secrets. Just trust the material. You know, I mean, you can't make a mistake. It's already broken. The fabric <laughs> already stripped, already stripped and already, you know, torn up. What, what can go wrong? But even in that, I have anxiety. It's like, oh, do I, if I put it there, I mean, and then I go, okay, well, I, I feel that, uh, and I move forward anyway. Just put it there and keep going. Because if I don't, if I, don't um, if I stop, then if I hesitate, then the, it won't reveal. It won't, I feel as though in some ways, uh, if I hesitate, I won't, uh, I want to, what, what do I do with those, you know, I don't, you, want, you don't want to do that because your mama doesn't like it or <laughs> you won't, why, why not? It's just, a, it's just fabric. It's just a broken, you know, you know what does it matter? Because we have that, all that baggage in our, you know, and I still have it, but I, I'm in a different relationship with it, you know. I need it, to be honest, because it, it pushes mm -hmm. me, to, oh, well, who's the, I can do it. I mean, what's going to happen if I do this? Will the world stop re revolving around that? No. You know, with the sun, no. What's why? What what power? Do I, <laughs> I mean, it's unbelievable. You know, like even the idea of using fabric, and you know, that's like how much did I did I have to wrestle with the idea of that's not art. Mm -hmm. who, who defines what art is? If I can't define it, I'm like, I'm gonna let somebody else do it. And the the, the piece behind you it looks like it's a much larger scale. Am I correct in that? This one? Yes. Or th that's all one piece? I mean, I, maybe I can lean the, the camera. <laughs> then it's huge. <laughs> wow.
So yeah, that, that one is substantially, it, it, at least from this angle, it looks like it's substantially larger um, than the rest. Is it part of the, what I see all the way in the left? No, no, these are, these are, that's just, there are different, there's two different pieces. But the, oh, got it, okay, okay. The, the light is just too, too, now it's just too dark, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, it's it's okay. Have, it's, it's it's the challenges of virtual visits. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. But the idea is like you know that I'm very you know um, I don't you know I, I don't write, I don't fight with things. This is what's happening. We're in quarantine. How do I what do I how do I see that in a positive way? Because if I fight with it, then it, it, there's physical man, man, manifestations with that resistance. If I accept it, because you know. The hard part is to accept things you can't change. Mm -hmm. It's easy to accept things you can change, but to accept things you can't, you know, you know, you know um, because it puts me in a whole different psychological and emotional, mental, spiritual uh, well-being if I decide I'm going to accept it, see where it takes me in a positive way. Because because if I'm always fighting, then I'll, I'll, I'll be, uh, you know, I like fighting with the world around me. I can't keep fighting because I don't have enough. I won't have enough energy. I won't. I won't. I can't keep up with it. There's just too much to fight about. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. Particularly in the times that we're in right now. <laughs> and, and then we, think, you know, these times are just in the period that we find ourselves. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, what you know, if we were around in you know in the 19, 1940s, what would that be like? Or 1918 yeah. during the influenza of 1918, 1918, right? Influenza of 1918, right? Or even, you know, or, or, you know, even further, like, I, I feel great comfort in the fact that I and we, people who are black and black and brown, we have the, the experience and the genes of, of, that have survived all of that. Mm -hmm. All the, all the, you know, and I, it's, it's in us and everybody has it. You know, everyone has the genes of those of the of the of the of the DNA that survived. We all have it, to, depending on what we have come to us. So we're survivors. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. I'm yeah. a survivor. You know, so it's all <laughs> right? That puts that puts a whole other look on life, right? I'm not a, I'm not a victim. I've been people have I've been treated as a victim, but I'm not a, you know, but I'm not a victim. You know, people have been enslaved. Not they're not slave. They were enslaved. They weren't slaves, right? The yeah, whole idea, yeah. right? So I'm in quarantine, but for a good reason, absolutely. But how do I want to? How do I want to em embrace it and and be creative? And how do I want to use my time? It's a great way to look at it. Um, so I just want to. Um, I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna hear from you about what's next. Um, you know, I, at the beginning I mentioned, and again, uh, this program is co-sponsored with the Headland Center for the Arts, where uh, you have a residency. Yes, you know, I, that residency has been postponed, but, I, but I'm looking, I'm ex so excited about being out there. So mm -hmm. I, I think, so, yeah. Can, can you talk a little bit more about it? I mean, I, mean, I think I, I'm looking at who's on the line. I think we have a lot of, a fair amount of artists on here right now, but um, you know, just, just what does your residency entail? Well, and and you've me, done several I, residencies, yeah, so. I'll have, have a larger space, and I'm so happy to be able, and then that's wonderful that I can, that, you know, the, the headlines are going to help me be able to make the pieces even larger. I can explore larger pieces of the ceramics. That's wonderful. Nice. And I'll be able to, and people can be able to uh, engage and see what I'm working on, because it'll be in a public space. So they can come in and see how, what's, what's happening in the studio, how I, how they feel about the work, how I, how I, how I interact with it. That's very good. Cause I, I don't think that art is, is art if it's not a dialogue. Sure. Sure. A dialogue. So I, I think that's very, and I'm happy that the, that the headlands and the leadership there and the, have allowed me to be able to be a part of that. Cause I think it's very important. And it's, you know, and art can be pushing people to think differently about the world is, is very powerful. It's very powerful. You know, um, that's one reason why all dictators around the world, Historically, at the first thing they, they shut down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Or they took complete control over it. That's right, because they don't want mm -hmm. anyone thinking or or on ideas that can that can push outside of the dogma and the propaganda. You know, so I I you know I think you know, art is just like in the headlands is definitely at the forefront of 
pushing ideas and, and letting people be able and artists to be able to explore those ideas in public. So it it you know it's a way for critical thinking to mm -hmm. you know, to start and foster and and ripple throughout you know throughout culture. You know, as a curator, you know, I would you know I I would write the statement about the work, right? But when people read my statement, they already they, they have their own. They come. I've already given them a point of view to see the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, yeah. I'm the authority. But, <laughs> right? but my thing is, why not see the show, have your own ideas, and if you want to read the statement. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 so is that what happens at the residency? Like people are flowing in to see your work, and and you're not putting up formal statements or not or? Not, not, not not there'll be a, you know I mean I don't know yet I mean I, I don't I don't anticipate putting up a formal statement I you know I don't mind doing that but I do like the idea that before there is a formal statement there can be visits people can come sure, out and, sure. Yeah. Okay. And then be, what, what, as an artist who's working in residency, do you find that, you know, I know you've done several of them over the last few years. Um, d does that, does that um, interaction with the public coming in to see your work in progress, do, do you feel like that changes it at all? Well, feedback is always good, you know, feedback, particularly with people who don't always work in the arts. We don't, you know, you know, their background is diverse. Feedback is always good because, you know, I mean, you know, uh, I know I can have my ideas about it, but that isn't that isn't that isn't everything. It's just my mm. idea, it's me. But but I, but how do I know how it's connecting to other people unless I'm unless it's unless they're interacting and expressing their opinions about it? I mean, I know how I see these shards, but most people don't. Most people don't 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 think in dream language or they don't think about the unconsciouses, even though even though they are they are you know. We, Everything that's sold to us is through dream language, and we're not. Well, it's more like mm -hmm. uh, exactly uh, tying into t uh, uh, un unfulfilled or irrational desires associated with a product. That's the unconscious, mm -hmm. you know. Like, you know, uh, Ed Edward Ber Edward Bernays came up with the idea of you know of uh, getting women to smoke cigarettes in the late eight <laughs> by tying you know liberty <laughs> with cigarette smoking. Well, and it's very successful, huh? Liberty. It's irrational. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But most people don't, don't know that they that they are acting irrational based on un 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 uh, on desires that they that they are unconscious about. You know, and so I I I you know I want to be able to help people become aware of the fact that you know what you're unconscious. <laughs> Uh, before, because we, we're, we're getting towards the end of our time at two o'clock, um, I definitely want to invite those uh, who are um, visiting us as attendees to please uh, chime in either using the chat box or the Q&A box with any questions that you have. Um, so yeah, we have about seven minutes left. And uh, Outside of, do, do you have do you have any sense um, of when the residency may start? Have they, you know, they kind of like have, set up further? Well, I mean, I don't, I, I don't know yet. We're it's still it's still you know, it's still being you know, uh, flushed out. We don't know yet. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other projects that that are forthcoming well, that you, know, you can I'm, share? Well, I'm still working on the the um, commission from the arts commission for the tapestry at the uh, health center in the Bayview. Wow. So that, right, so that, that's still, you know, it, it, it is a bit delayed because of the, of the pandemic, but it's still on, still on the drawing board. We're still moving forward with it. So, uh, so that, that too will happen, you know, um, within the next, you know, I'll hopefully you'll start weaving for that this year. Wow, wow. And, and that, are you doing all the work for this commission or, or is this also community participant? No, no, it's all mine. It's so all I'm, you, wow, okay. You know, and the community, the community part was, you know, when, it, when, it, when, when a crochet jam is done, that's a community event. So the studio art, and that's only my, only my work, or I, I may hire people to help me, but it's still my vision and my plan for the, for the, for the execution of the work. Uh, that's amazing. Where where else can folks see your work? I know there's a couple places that they can see them now. <laughs> well, 
I mean, the best place would be able to see them would be on uh, Patricia Suito Gallery. Mm -hmm. the, her website, you know, is up and running and some, it's really well organized, very beautiful. Patricia Suito Gallery. There's also my website, ramacon.com. Um, mm -hmm. um, and that's crochetjam.com if you want to go there. But those are, those are, you know, social practice and or community art engagement and my studio work. Awesome. So we've got a couple things in the Q&A. So Elizabeth Evans says, thank you. This has been wonderful. I look forward to more of these kinds of visits. Mr. R. Wisters is very inspiring and I completely agree with that. Um, <laughs> we have another person uh, with a question. If you make larger work that you can accommodate at home while uh, you're at Headlands, what do you plan to do with it after your residency ends? Well, you know, uh, I might have to, because, you know, right now it's, it's in every room of my condo. They're in the kitchen, they're in the living room, they're in my <laughs> I might have to look at, um, and the, plus the gallery has some of the pieces, at a store, a final place to store them. <laughs> it's it's, it's going to come to that, huh? You, you all have I, a place to I'm, sit no, down. I'm, I'm, I'm obsessed with it. I mean, I, that's what I, you know, I, uh, I, I, I'm obsessed. I have to make these pieces because I, every time I, every time I go into them, some, I'm always surprised. I don't know what's going to happen until, so I'm always like, what's going to happen? And then I, I get there and these bizarre pieces just materialize in front of me. <laughs> and I, I get so excited. I, go, I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> I see them as little, you know, they're, they're shard, you know, like, you know, like this at one, one time. And then the next thing I know, they're like, they're like that, you know, they're like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I don't, so, I know. So, I, so I, is that, is, is that how they have to start for you? You have these, these just individual piece like that. And then it, it transforms it just, into these. All right, yeah, it just transforms right in front of me. You know, wow. And I am just so excited. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, I don't think that we have any other questions uh, coming through for the participants. Um, so I want to thank you so much for taking your time to be with us today, Ramakan. Well, thank you and the Headlands and, the, and, and Moad for allowing me to, to participate. Uh, it's very quite, it's very good. Thank you. Yeah, you're, you're just one of the people that, you know, I would always love to come hang out with. Um, and I can't wait to the so the quarantine is lifted and I can actually come out and, and get a cup of coffee with you. Beautiful. Um, yeah, so uh, today so uh, put up a couple of links so you can find out, uh, you can go to the chat link and you can find Ramakan's website. Um, you can also find out a little bit more about our co-sponsor, the Headland Center for the Arts. Uh, she also posted that. Um, she also posted the link to Patricia Suito Gallery. You, you can also find, you can also find Ramakan on social media. Uh, yeah. I follow I follow you on Facebook and on Instagram. Yeah. Um, oh, you guys can't see the chat uh, today. Oh, it only went to the panelists. Um, so we'll recopy it and send it to all attendees as well. Um, thank you so much for letting us know that. Um, Let's see, I'll copy, I'll, I'll copy these and add them, or do we have them now? Yeah, somebody else said that. <laughs> uh, technology, gotta love it. And yeah, so then uh, you can also follow him on social media, and uh, that's, that's, that's how I find out what you're up to when I can't meet up with you, and you're always, always busy. Lots and lots of crochet jams that folks can, um, well, when when the when the quarantine is over, because right now there aren't any. Yeah, yeah. For for good cause, maybe you could do some virtually. <laughs> we'll, we'll see how that works. I know I know people can still order. I don't know if we could get your custom gigantic uh, crochet hooks, but uh... <laughs> yeah, that, that, that would mean you know violating the the quarantine, you know. But they could. <laughs> you could crochet with your fingers. All you need is strips of fabric. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's a whole thing on YouTube called, you know, finger crochet. Uh, right. Yeah. Finger crochet. <laughs> Might have to talk to you about that. <laughs> yeah. 
I think I, I think uh, I think I think I'm may, maybe having you come back for another visit with us <laughs> sooner than later. It's been wonderful, Ramakan. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time out I'm for today. Happy. Give my best. I wanna... Go ahead. Oh, thank all of you. Very happy that they're here. Yes, me too. Thank you for for taking the time in the middle of your day to be with us. Um, I also want to let everyone know. Uh, that this uh, that this event has been recorded and you can uh, if you want to watch it again you can see it uh, on our YouTube channel Museum of the African Diaspora um, and next week at the same time we'll be talking with Shaniqua Brooks thank you thanks so much